generation to houselessness. Uh, Kia ora, I call the Honourable Bill Twyford. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I want to speak to vote social housing and uh, make some comments about housing policy. First, I want to thank the Social Services Committee under the able uh, chairmanship of Gareth Hughes for uh, the excellent work that the committee did during estimates. Um, our strong sense is that the New Zealand public want the government to fix the housing crisis. They want us to get on with it and, uh, and build houses. And uh, this is our first budget. Um, it is the largest investment in house building uh, ever in New Zealand history. It's a foundational budget. It's our first step in building our way out of the national housing crisis. We have a plan to tackle the national housing crisis right across the continuum of housing need, and I want to talk about that plan. We're working hard to end homelessness and increase public housing. The other theme that came out of the estimates um, hearings in Vote Social Housing was that this government is finally funding programs that the previous government talked about but never actually put up the money to properly fund. Now the centrepiece, the centrepiece of this budget's housing policy is that we are building a net additional 6,400 public houses over the next four years. A net additional 6,400. Now, Madam Chair, I want, to, I want you to contrast, contrast that funded commitment, a net additional 6,400 state and community provided homes, with the record of the former government who reduced the number of state houses over nine years in office, a net reduction of 6,000 houses, and if you take into account community homes, a net reduction of 1,500 public houses over nine years in the middle of a housing crisis. Now, we heard a lot from the members opposite about how they were going to build all these extra houses. The fourth term national government would have been an amazing thing to see because they were going to do all of these things. They promised the world after nine years in office when they reduced the amount of public housing, they reduced the amount of public housing. Apparently in the fourth term, they were going to reverse all that and build thousands of extra houses. Well, it took a change of government to, to get a government that actually put the money up to fund uh, these promises. This government is investing $4 billion, $4 billion to increase the number of state houses by 6,400 and upgrade and improve the existing housing stock. We are also upgrading uh, through regulation every rental property in this country by passing the Healthy Homes Guarantee Act and setting decent insulation standards, not the half-baked ones that the previous government did, but proper insulation standards, plus requirement for a fixed, modern, affordable heating source, and also standards on draft stopping and drainage and weather tightness. These are real healthy home standards that have been passed into law. And Housing New Zealand is now spending about $100 million improving every one of its properties, including putting a heat pump in all of them. So that is, the, that is the difference. That is a serious commitment to healthy homes, um, uh, Madam Chair. The estimates hearing also focused quite a lot on um, tenancy management issues um, for Housing New Zealand, and that's an area where we've seen a whole different approach from this government, a more compassionate and tenant-centred approach. Over the last nine years, Housing New Zealand our public housing organisation, was stripped of its social mandate systematically by the former government. When I became the housing minister, Madam Chair, I met Housing New Zealand staff that told me they were doing pastoral care work with tenants on the weekend because they'd been told that it wasn't their job to do it. And now under our government, Madam Chair, 
It is the job of Housing New Zealand tenancy managers to do that pastoral care work. We have brought, Madam Chair, we have brought compassion and kindness back to the administration of public housing in this country. We also pulled the plug on the hysteria around methamphetamine contamination in public housing that was actively stirred up by that government and they allowed the lack of a decent scientific standard to mean that Housing New Zealand over the last four years wasted the best part of $100 million on decontamination work that never needed to happen. At the same time, private landlords were making insurance claims of on average $25 million a year for methamphetamine contamination, most of which never needed to be done because of the total failure of political leadership under the former government. Well, we, it took us a few weeks in office to commission Sir Peter Gluckman to do that report and sweep away the moral hysteria that had been allowed to be whipped up um, under the former government. That has all changed under this government. Now, Madam Chair, we know that we need to do more. We've inherited the legacy of a nine years of housing crisis that was allowed to spin out of control. That is why the housing register, the, the, wait house, the waiting list for public housing is now um, bigger than it's ever been before. And I found it amusing to hear the member Louise Upston earlier in this debate blaming a government that's been in office for nine months for the legacy of a housing crisis that was allowed to get out of control for nine years. That, is, that shows um, uh, a gall that, frankly, I, f I find um, amazing and admirable in some ways, actually. <laughs> so, Madam Chair, um, the register is now the highest it's been, um, 8,108 uh, in April, and the figures are going up every month. We know that the hidden homeless that were reported on by the housing stock take that we commissioned in our first few weeks in office. We know that the true scale of homelessness has been suppressed for too long. We know that now there's a government that cares, a government that welcomes people to come forward and get the help that they need, that it's gonna, those figures are, will continue to get worse before they get better. In Budget 2018, we committed an extra $100 million over and above the baseline funding for Housing First and Emergency and Transitional Housing. An extra $100 million. We are rolling out Housing First in the hut, in Wellington, in Tauranga, in Hamilton, in Auckland, in Whangarei, in Napier and Hastings. The world acclaimed approach to dealing with chronic homelessness. We have also finally funded the commitment that the former government made to roll out 2,200 odd emergency and transitional housing places that they promised but never funded properly. They also didn't fund the frontline staff needed to manage that program. So we funded all of those things and we've in fact rolled out several hundred extra transitional housing places. That's, that was our commitment, Madam Chair, to a, a seriously tackling homelessness as part of the winter 2018 package. It's long overdue that in this country that we put in place a decent safety net. I want to take um, the remaining uh, minutes and a bit that I've got, Madam Chair, to talk about some of the wider housing and urban development uh, issues that this government is tackling that really come under the building and construction part of this debate. And I want to acknowledge my colleague, the Honourable Jenny Salesa, who is Minister of Building and Construction, is leading a really ambitious programme of workforce and skills development, reforming the whole uh, product certification scheme and all of the building regulatory framework that we need to put in place to ensure that our Kiwi Build policy is successful. The other big enablers of the Kiwi Build policy are tackling the systemic problems that are, have caused the housing crisis and the fact that only that, that we are 71,000 houses short at the moment as a result of the negligence and drift of the last nine years. We are reforming the financing of infrastructure that will allow our towns and cities to grow. We are freeing up the planning system to allow our cities to grow up and to grow out we're putting in place an urban development authority that will lead large-scale urban development projects that will build 
not just housing, but whole communities. Madam Chair, these are the system-wide fixes to the housing crisis. Um, before I call the honourable member, I just want to confirm with the member who took the point of order that uh, the speech, the, the, the debate was within, um, within the estimates. Uh, and for reference of the House, that is page 291 of the estimates document. Kia ora, I call Dan Bidwa. Chair, it's a pleasure to take a call this evening.